Sebastian, we started speaking to him yesterday to answer a few questions. He's back on Skype with us. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're well. Hello, Sebastian. Can you hear me? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you very yes, much. Yes, I can hear you. I just have um, a little All right. bit of... You're, you're welcome back to COVID-19 yeah. 360. Now, I was just checking the chart. Um, that indicates that younger people between 25 and 59 in Ghana are recording more cases than people that were expected to have recorded cases, which is from 60 and above. Does this worry you, and what does this suggest? Um, I think... <laughs> it's interesting, but anyway, first of all, uh, good morning to you guys. I think you're doing a good job, and um, I, I must uh, commend you for what you're doing. Now, let me first mention off by uh, saying that we shouldn't overthink the data we have, okay. because even if you're talking about more numbers, um, you're talking about 6, 8, 10, that is really nothing for now, okay? That is nothing to make um, assumptions from. Uh, look at what happened in China. We're looking at huge numbers, and that is where we're getting their data from. Yeah. And if you have, um, let's say, 200 cases total, okay, mm -hmm. and then you have these numbers, you are seeing this, and then 10, and no, I, I mean, and let me also mention that this virus is progressing gradually, you know, studies are ongoing. Mm -hmm. We are getting data from different places now. We can't use data from just one okay. one place to make a good day for China. We had data from only China, and we concluded on it that, Children yeah. are not dying. Children are not getting the disease. But mm -hmm. no, when we see the data from Italy and um, other places like Germany, realize children, yeah, children, um, children adults are, are getting dying. it. Everyone is getting it. However, when it comes to the death cases, yes. Now, when it comes to the death, you have Africa, for instance. All the deaths we've recorded mm -hmm. is people between, I think, 40 or so and yeah. about... True. Everyone, you know, in the ages that we are so much concerned about dying. So these are things we have to actually look at. It is not something we have to overthink it. Okay. Until we get huge data or data. Sorry. The point is we can't really we can't really pray for more cases. But one thing we can say is that what we have is not conclusive enough. Okay. But at the same time, even though you're saying we shouldn't worry our heads over the data that we have, we're also realizing that more males are recording cases as compared to females between the ages of twenty five and fifty nine. I was watching a documentary um, where it talked about why younger people are even recording cases, especially males, and the fact that we tend to, you know, get involved in a lot of things. It, it, it stuff. So smoking, drinking is a regular thing for people around these ages. And maybe that could be the reason why younger people are recording and reason why more males are recording. Is that uh, probable? It is possible. I mean, most of these, like, again, like I said, this whole thing is evolving over time. You know, we are getting to understand so many things. Uh, for the children, for instance, we're thinking that it's because they don't have um, the receptors that the virus requires to uh, to attach to a cell. Mm -hmm. The children are not having the matured ones, the matured receptors. Yeah. And that's why they are not getting it. But I'm glad to realize that that is not really the case. And right now, we are seeing more young people dying. Now, males are getting more infections than uh, females. The question is, is there any lifestyle that men engage in that women don't really do. I think it is true. We have so many things that men do that women do not do. Some protect males. You know, I'm not going to go so much into that. That is someone's whole area. But for biology standpoint, whatever we are seeing right mm -hmm. right now, it's a very good thing good thing for thing for radical common. Okay. And then uh, genes that are not that are not common, common these genes. Until then, we can't make so much um, assumptions and okay. conclusions from all this um, data we are seeing. All Again, right. let's not overthink the numbers. We have, we have very low numbers right now. We can't mm -hmm. make so much from it. If we are saying we shouldn't overthink the numbers, again, there was a scare. I mean, the president spoke and said that we're waiting for about 15,000 results. That will determine what line of action to take next. And then out of the over 15,000 results, we had a little over 7,000 results being ready. And then out of that, only 14 people tested positive. Now people are breathing out and saying, okay, as much as we're hoping we won't record cases, at least 14 is a good number. What do you make of this as well? And does it mean that, well, maybe the measures we've put in place are working? People are respecting um, um, the social distancing and hygienic conditions as well. And is that a good sign? 
Yeah, first of all, uh, let me say that that number is really um, um, for getting 7,000 7, tests done and getting yeah. only 14 people uh, positive. Yeah. I think it's a very promising. Okay. And went to the 15,000 and we see the same trend. I think maybe the lockdown will be released, you know, so people can go about their daily activities. It's really promising. Okay. Um, we should also expect to see for it when we see more numbers because whatever we see is because we are doing more testing. Yesterday I mentioned that um, it is a golden rule that the more you test, the more cases you find. Mm -hmm. So if people are, t t are testing 7,000, getting 14, the probability that we will test the rest and get less is there. And there's okay. also a probability that we test the more and then get more is also there. Okay. So again, we shouldn't be thinking so much. I'm a scientist, but I but I like to say, please, let, mm. let's get, okay. I'm not really concerned about people getting infected. Let me explain why. If we get more people infected, mm -hmm. the point is most people will heal. They will, it will not be, you know, a big issue. People will people um, eventually will get will get towards our head immunity which i'll explain briefly mm -hmm. but it happens that when you get more people infected and their cases are severe then that is where the hospitals become overwhelmed yeah you understand so that is where my worry is and please let me let me uh, um, use this opportunity to state that the social distancing the wash of hands and all these things that were put in place are working and they should be at heads mm -hmm. Helps you this because yes, there is lockdown, but still there are some areas where people are, you know, uh, communicating. They are mingling. You know, they, they interact, and that social distancing is not respected. Let me yeah. give a typical example in my area. Yesterday, my yeah, get some oranges to buy, and then I saw a couple of guys. You know, they were just seated close together, chats and having fun. You know, ideally, it is social distancing before the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So even if you are not going to respect the lockdown, you should respect social distancing. This is not working in all areas. So if we can come down to our local areas and enforce the social distance, I think it will be the best way to go. Otherwise, we will test people, we will get negatives, and we will take um, care, of, care of what we've had so far. And then eventually, we start reporting cases again. This mm -hmm. is what we don't want to get. You know. So if we can adhere to all the rules... Yeah. Okay. It will go a long way to help us to keep the numbers that low. Yes. Yesterday, there was also a concern by some people who had been released from mandatory quarantine. And they were complaining that some of them come from other parts of Ghana, so not necessarily in the capital city, Accra. Now, they released them to go home, and unfortunately, no form of transportation was provided for them. I'm yet to hear government side of the story on that, but these are complaints from some of these people who are under mandatory quarantine. Now, we're saying that these people have tested negative and we're supposed to ensure that moving forward, they don't even catch the virus on their way. Um, at this point where they've been left to figure out life for themselves, what really could be the, the, the best way to ensure that they don't catch the virus whilst they're going back home as well? And at the same time, for the 26 people that tested positive again uh, during the second test under mandatory quarantine, could it have been that they picked it from uh, the, the, the location where they were being kept under mandatory quarantine? Okay, so everything is, everything is possible. Transporting um, the, uh, the people who have been cleared to go home, I, to, to, uh, well, that's my standpoint. I think we should get a controlled transportation for them to get them to wherever they are going and keep them there and keep them still in isolation in their homes, homes, you know, for a while and then monitor them. Because what we tend to find is that when you do a test and the result is negative, it does not necessarily mean that there is no... No, but sometimes it's because the threshold is not to the level where the um, the test can detect. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, um, a negative response just because the level is really low. So eventually, when the virus multiplies and gets to a threshold where um, we can make it, that's where they turn positive. So initially, it's not because they are not there; they are there, but they were not up to the threshold. We call it detection limits. Okay. okay. They did not get to the detection limit. So you don't get them, and then eventually it's positive. I think that answers your question where people who tested negative are testing positive. It's a yes. possibility. Yes. Now, another possibility is what you mentioned. You are correct. Um, they can pick it from the environment. Remember, people are still in, 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 the, so in the society because their uh, duties are essential. You know, mm. we don't know who is positive or negative because we didn't test them before we allowed essential duties to go on. Yeah. So these guys can pick it again from the environment. It is possible. Okay. All right. Awesome.
and then we use social distancing. So I'm thinking that we can have a controlled way of transporting them to their homes and keep them in isolation for a while. That would be the best. All That's right. what I think for, for, for now. Okay, Sebastian, this is all time will allow for us to have a conversation, but hopefully we can speak to you again the later hand -washing in procedure. the week. Can you hear me? That, that, that yeah, should I was, be it. I was about you wanted to, to say something? That a medical, uh, medical doctor. Okay, okay, then quickly do yeah, that for us. Yeah, a medical doctor so actually called me. Uh, yeah, yeah, just before I came online, a medical doctor called me and then mentioned two, two things. The first one is um, the hand washing. Mm -hmm. It should be ahead to, and it should not be less than 20 seconds. The second thing is um, the sun sanitizers. Sanitizers. When okay. we put it on the, our hands, we allow it to dry on our hands before we touch Yes, before we touch items. And the last one she mentioned was proper education for people who would want to use masks. Yes, it is. It okay. very fast, we don't well. We are, we use another transmission route. So masks should be encouraged, but uh, should be used properly. Are you saying that we should make sure the sanitizer dries up before we touch anything? Yes, yes, it's very important that way because the. Wow. The, um, on the hand and shows that the virus is killed. There's oh. a mechanism to it, which we can explain later. But okay, it's very yes. important the hand sanitizers dry out. We'll, we'll let you explain this later on. Our time is up um, with this conversation. And so thank you so much, Sebastian, for speaking to us. He's a virologist and a Cambridge scholar, by the way. I got it right this time around.